What's up YouTube? One Harp coming at you today with the first in the new series of re expanded reviews. One Harp, one camera, and one bag. <laughs> All right, so today what we're going to be doing is a quick hit review on the in-case DSLR sling. DSLR sling. I'm going to show you how I carry this bag. I had it for almost a year now. And uh, I'm going to talk about what it's good for and what it's absolutely not good for. I'm going to tell you what the things about this bag that I absolutely love and the things that drive me crazy. So stick with it, we're going to get into it right now. Alright, so I've got the angle fixed on the camera and uh, I've got it pointed down here at the bag. And I'm going to get into the features of this bag. It's fully loaded out right now the way I like to carry it. I'm going to tell you why I've chosen to carry the things that I've carried in this particular bag and not some other things, right? So that's the first clue. Even though this is the DSLR sling, this is not for a large camera. This is not for a DSLR camera. This is for a small mirrorless camera. I have the Olympus OMD uh, 10 EM10 Mark II in here. Even a slightly larger camera like the one I'm filming on right now, the OMD EM1 Mark II. You can fit that in here, but it becomes unpleasant after a while because this is a sling bag, right? One shoulder strap, one shoulder strap. That's the thing about this bag. It's the major limitation, but it's also the freedom. If you use this bag, I'm telling you right now, if you use this bag within its limits, it's pretty sweet, all right? Now, there are a few things about this bag that I absolutely love and a few things that I absolutely hate, so we're gonna get into that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the outside specs. Made of nylon, pretty good material, not waterproof, right? This is not a waterproof material. This will soak through, all right? There is no rain cover on this bag, so if you're going to monsoon season in Arizona or the Pacific Northwest, right, this may not be the bag for you to carry at front. The materials, though, are really good. They're hard wearing. They're, they're going to last a long time. I really feel good about that. The back panel has got this sort of breathable mesh. I'll tell you, it's not that breathable, though. If you wear this when it's hot, you try and go hiking for a long time, this is going to start to sweat up against your back. But the cool thing about the sling is that you can swing it around and let your back air out. So not that big of a deal. The shoulder strap. It's pretty beefy. It's pretty wide. All right. There's some padding in here. It's not the cushiest, not the most padded shoulder strap in the world. That can cause problems when you load this bag down. But if you keep it light, it's very comfortable. The strap here. If you can see, it's made out of this sort of seat belt material. It's really slick. It's really wide. It's really strong. I love this strap. This is really pretty good for this kind of bag, right? For this kind of bag, this strap is really pretty good. There's not flexibility. Uh, it's not flexible though, right? It only goes over your left shoulder when you have this in the sling. You can't really wear it in the sling con uh, configuration over your right shoulder. It's not reversible. So that can be an issue for you if you like to swing the bag the other way around, right? There's a couple of handles, right? There's a handle right here, and then there's a handle here on the top. These handles are fantastic. They are basically that same, more slick kind of a nylon webbing, although not quite as slick as this, this bigger strap, but they're thick, right? And they're wide enough but not too wide they actually feel really 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 good in the hand they are bar stitched across right so they are not going to tear out quality is overall pretty good until it comes and this is a major flaw a major weakness until it comes to the zippers in case if you are listening to this review please 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 in the new version of this bag beef up your zippers all right so really what we have are two main pockets we have this outside pocket which is small this zipper is fine for this one because this is not where you're putting most of your stuff i tend to keep a small travel tripod in here a couple of lens cloths not much else right um maybe you can put your cell phone in there there is a couple of interior pockets there's this sort of mesh stretchy pocket over here there's a pocket that well it's not big enough for my phone but it could be big enough for your phone 
And then there's a couple of like places to put your pens or in another little pocket over here. Business cards, I would say. This part of the exterior pocket flexes out, right? So it can stretch. You can stretch that a little bit. This part over here does not flex very much at all, all right? You're basically stuck. You can maybe put your phone in this part over there. I think that might be what they intend. But I don't like putting my phone on the exterior pocket just in case I forget to zip it up and it falls out or somebody, I'm in a crowd and they're coming through and they're trying to pickpocket me, right? You don't want to get pickpocketed, all right? So what I did is I stick this little small tripod in there just in case. Sometimes I don't put anything in there whatsoever. Maybe like a, like a granola bar or something like that. All right. Now the other exterior zipper is the main compartment right here. And that's where they really need to beef it up. Right. To be honest with you, this zipper is way too small for it to be the main zipper for the main compartment. And the real pain is that there's these corners, right? And so when you do it, it sticks sometimes on these corners. And I'll show you this. I'll show you that when I, uh, when, I, when I show you how I use this in real life, all right? All right, here we are. Here's the interior compartment over here. In the lip of the lid here that unzips, you get uh, basically two mesh pockets. This is really great. I keep my lens pens in this side, and over here I keep my card reader, some more lens claws, and this is where I keep my SD cards, all right? This is one thing that they don't have in this bag is built-in little pockets for your SD cards. That would be really useful, and I'll talk about that in just a second, all right? So, little zipper pouches up here, and then here we have the main compartment over here with these padded dividers, all right? So, what I have in here, I'll just take them out slowly by slowly, all right? I have my camera, EM1 Mark II. This is a adapted Pentax 50 millimeter lens on there. My strap, all right? I have the Olympus uh, uh, 40 to 150, uh, what is this, the F3.5 or F, uh, F4 to 5.6, right? This is an incredibly light, flexible telephoto. Uh, I have underneath that section, I have my little blower, rocket pocket thing, right? You need that. And then over here, now this is a modification. This is actually a Peak Designs divider that I've added just to get, put some more flexibility. I've just got another lens in this case. It's the Panasonic 20 millimeter pancake, right? But I switch these out from time to time. And that's really it in terms of lens. Lenses except for, of course, the little tiny um, uh, nine millimeter fisheye lens, the, the, the body cap lens, which is a beautiful minimalist lens I'll talk about in a separate video. Over on this side, we have some dividers that have like some sort of pockets in them. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about over here, these sort of flexible, flexible kind of pockets. Let's see if I can make that right here. I just keep just a few filters. Usually I keep a really tiny flash over here. Really tiny Olympus flash. Wonderful. Again, minimal. We're talking minimalist. We're talking minimalist over here. And I leave this open and this is like to stuff in, I don't know, a hat, handkerchief, whatever it is, like, you know, a couple more snacks, something like that. And that's really how I carry this, right? So I'll talk about these dividers here in a second, but there's one more pocket that I want to talk about, which is this back pocket over here. This is supposed to be for your um, tablet computer. I keep books in there if I keep anything at all, right? Usually I don't keep anything at all in there. And the reason is you don't want to be getting into this pocket very frequently because every time you unzip it, this back panel becomes too flexible and all of your pads for your heavy camera gear, right? Even though it's minimal camera gear, it's still pretty heavy. It starts to pull away and the whole bag deforms like this. And then all of a sudden you have no structure, all right? So I don't usually use this at all. Maybe I stash my, my phone in there because it's actually inside the bag in a way. But I don't want to be getting into this throughout the day frequently because that's a real pain. Now, like I said, this is the Peak Designs divider right here that I'm using to add some functionality that's actually lacking, I think, in terms of the, the dividers. What they do is they give you three, all right? They give you uh, two that look like this, right? They have this foldable top and then the Velcro all around. And then they give you one that looks like this. It has one of these little mesh pockets on it and then the Velcro thing right around there. Now, you can probably get away with that. What I've done, however, 
since I've got the other uh, divider in there from Peak Designs, I've put the second one of these, right? The second one of these guys right up against the back over here. This is actually the bottom of the bag when you set it down. So I wasn't too happy with the amount of padding that was there, right? When I set this thing down, I was worried that my lenses or whatever were actually going to get a little dented or damaged, right? So I've put that thing so it doubles the padding right there, but I flipped it upside down so it gives me a sort of second compartment, a sort of second compartment down here under this flap, under the flap that we're talking about here. Let's see if I can make sure that you can see that, right? See this flap right here? There's a little compartment there, but I can put something non-critical like this blower, right? That can fit right underneath there. And now I have a shelf. Once I add this guy back in, facing the other way, so I'm gonna do that real quick. You can just see how fast this is. Boom. So now I have a, a second shelf that I can stick a lens like this in, right? So it's on top of that folded down portion, and I can fold this back like that. And now I have basically all I need to uh, stick my camera right in top like that. Using this Peak Designs um, flex fold origami type thing gives me a shelf so I can get a lens on the camera down and then the camera body over here while storing some more stuff under there. If you didn't have this, right, so you just bought this, this thing is $15, by the way, I think, on the Peak Designs website. If you didn't have this, I'm going to put this guy back in there, you would have to basically be content with a larger sort of open space, so like that, all right? Now, you could use these dividers. They want you to put them like this just so you can put it in there, and if you're using a real, uh, like a pancake lens on your small camera, you can put it vertically, the camera vertically down in there, you know, like this. And like this, with this big open area, you can now put your camera in it like that. But now you're down a lens, unless you want this other lens just sort of hanging out in there, which you could do, which you could definitely do. It's not that big of a deal. I just like the flexibility of adding this additional really cool Peak Designs um, flex fold divider in there. Okay? So, that's really the pockets, okay? That's really how I have the things stored in there. You can see I don't have that much in there. I got the camera, and really I got two to maybe three lenses, and a small tripod, and that's about it, all right? Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I carry this and why I don't choose to carry more than this, but I'm gonna turn the camera, I'm gonna change the angle so I'm standing, you can see how it looks on my body. So, stick around, I'll be right back. All right, I flipped the camera around again. Now you can see me, I'm standing up. I apologize that you can see the microphone in the shot here, but I want the audio to be good, so you're gonna have to deal with that. All right, so I've got the bang. It's on how it's meant to be worn, all right? So here is the strap right here across my, again, left shoulder. This is the only shoulder, if you wanna wear this in crossbody configuration, that this bag is gonna fit on. Um, here we have a sort of the excess of the strap is taken care of by this, this is actually an elastic band that fits around the rest of it. So it keeps it pretty nice, it's not flapping, right? If you really wanna cinch this up, if you're not a huge person, I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, or so, um, so I'm not like the tallest guy, so sometimes I wanna cinch this up. It does hang loose, right? This, this, this um, sort of um, strap right here can only go as far as there on the bag. I found, however, if you flip this around underneath and sort of pull it through, it takes care of it pretty well, but you're always fiddling with that. So that's a little bit of a downside to this particular design, but there is a solution to keep the strap from dangling down so it doesn't get caught on stuff. The operation, the way this bag is supposed to work, you're supposed to be walking around with the bag slung around your back like this, right? This is what it looks like when it's in the middle of your back like this. This is how it's supposed to be carried so how it's most comfortable on the shoulder right here and it's right in the middle of your back, right? When you see that perfect photo opportunity, you're supposed to grab here on the buckle, pull like this and swing it around, all right? So I find you really gotta pull a little bit further than just the minimal distance to get it so that it sits naturally, so that it sits right where you want it to be, where you can actually work with it. The idea about this sling bag is that it's on your back when you're walking, but when you're working, it's in front of you like a mobile desk, all right? 
Then you're supposed to zip it up like this, flip this down, grab your camera out, and then go to town, right? Pull the lens cap off and take a nice photo of the camera that's photographing you. Oh, look at that, have it on HDR. <laughs> All right, so that's how it's supposed to operate. That's how it's supposed to operate. And I find if you work within that limit, a specific weight limit, it works perfectly fine for this operation. Now, I just took this thing. This is fully loaded the way you saw it before, and I put it on my bathroom scale, and it came in at right around six pounds. And I find right about six pounds is the maximum operating weight for this particular bag to where it stops becoming or stops being comfortable and starts becoming burdensome on my shoulder over here, okay? Um, if I have the bigger camera, if I have bigger lenses or something like this, I can carry this for a little while, but then it really starts to hurt, all right? So that's a big downside. Here is the second downside. I've taken my shot, I've put my camera back in. Now I wanna zip this guy up and get going. I gotta, I gotta somehow cinch this thing up like this so that I can get this little teeny dinky zipper and then I gotta try and pinch the bag over here to pull the rest of the zipper. And I can get it closed, but it's a struggle, it's not fluid. This nice handle right here, there needs to be another one right here. If I had a handle right here, I could hold that handle and pull back. Like you see, I can't, there's nothing to pull back. The zipper gets stuck. I can grab this, but it doesn't do it. I gotta pinch this thick material in order to get the zipper to go around, to go around this corner. So frustrating. That's the most frustrating thing about this bag. Here's another lost opportunity. You see this? This is, I guess it's supposed to be like a, like a stabilizer for when it's on your back. They could have a zipper right here. What a fantastic place to keep SD cards, right? Not floating in these mesh pockets here on the interior where there's other stuff and they could fall out. Right here would be a perfect place for SD cards. If you just had a zipper, slip them right in there. Easy to get, easy to go out. Missed opportunity, big time, all right? Now, the cool thing about this design, when it's in front of you, is when you want to change lenses, all right? You flip it open like this, you've got basically a, a, a working spot. You can take your lens off, put it down in there like that, grab your other lens, take the cap off, put it on the, the back side of that one, and then you stick this one on like this, and you're good to go, right? Flip it around like this, and you're good to go, right? Nice, small, light, easy. Everything here is self-contained so that when you're doing that kind of stuff, you can just keep this in front of you and you can shoot, shoot, shoot. Then you know, oh, I need a wider lens. You flip it around like this and you're back to your other guy in no time. This is very convenient when you're actually shooting. Um, so that is a major plus for this particular kind of sling bag because this whole thing opens up. You have all the access to all your gear right in here like a mobile desk, like a mobile workstation. And that is a huge benefit uh, to this bag. And it's the main reason why I keep this bag, why I continue to use this bag, despite some of its other shortcomings, right? Now I'm good. I can fold this back up. I can zip it up like this, right? Now, I like to keep these zippers over here because I'm terrified when I, this thing is on my back that this zipper is gonna be open and one of my lenses is gonna fall out. So that's a downside right there, but as long as you are paranoid like me and you keep the zippers up here, it should be fine. Now, I have found sometimes I've left the bag open like this and I put it up here and nothing has ever fallen out thus far. All right, don't wanna jinx myself. Um, the other cool thing is that when you have it in front of you like this, this handle that they've built right here is the perfect handle to take it off, right? And it, and it really is in a good position. This top handle is also in a really good position when you have the bag down on the ground and you lean to pick it up. It's right there and it's easy to grab. Then you just swing it over your body like this and you pull down, you cinch down on the deal. You pull this guy through and you're ready to go pretty much, okay? Now, there's one thing I haven't talked about, which are these straps right here. They are meant to hold a tripod. These straps right here are meant to hold a tripod. 
and they're basically nice mesh straps but they aren't quick release they're just regular buckles so you'd have to thread your tripod through there they have these again these same kind of um, elastic holders so they don't dangle when you pull them through but you're not putting a tripod on this bag this bag is too small to hold a tripod if you have a smaller travel tripod, I'm filming on a Mi Photo uh, road trip right now, that can sort of fit on there, but it gets too heavy. It gets too unwieldy. These straps are pointless. You should not have had uh, put these straps on there. Instead, I would have preferred, I don't know, a D-ring, something to clip a water bottle to. There is no water bottle storage in this bag. Um, sometimes I clip a water bottle to the top and I, and I sort of keep it strapped in over here. That sort of works, uh, but again, it's not ideal. Probably another stretch pocket back here with a D-ring up here so that I can actually put a water bottle in the pocket and clip it into the top would be ideal. That would make this the perfect bag. Fix this zipper, add the SD card slots or a sort of pocket over here, ditch these things right here and make this a water bottle pocket with a clip right there. And this would be the ideal small walk around bag for mirrorless f cameras for especially micro four thirds cameras a body and maybe two three at most four small lenses all right the way you've got this configured now the last thing i'll say about this bag is that it's actually relatively affordable um comes in between 80 and 90 dollars depending the price goes up and down and I think for that price, the quality that you get is actually pretty good, right? Despite those few shortcomings. Other sling bags that uh, cost more might have slightly more features, um, but you're paying more, all right? You're paying more. If you pay less, there are other bags like Amazon Basics and a few other that cost considerably less. I don't think you're going to get the quality of the materials. This bag, I think, will last despite the fact that that zipper, that one thing that I'm concerned about is that zipper. It's too small, all right? So, would I buy this bag again? I think I'm at about 60% yes on that. Um, and the reason is, I think that zipper is really the big downside. I could live with everything else. That zipper really causes me some frustration. It looks good. It's a nice design. The materials are good. So I'm pretty pleased with it. As long as I keep it within its weight limit, it's pretty comfortable. It's nice for going out and shooting street photography around town, um, family gatherings, go to a party. You know, it's, what it isn't is a daily carry bag. You're not putting a computer in here. You're not putting a jacket in here, right? You're not putting all kinds of other stuff in here. This is just a camera bag. And what it also isn't is uh, uh, a bag for going hiking or being in the outdoors or for travel long distances or something like that. This is not what this bag is made for. This is a bag for just putting in a camera, a few lenses to go out on a photo walk to do some shooting, and that is it. Now, one last tip that I'm going to give you that I found is that when your shoulder starts to hurt, because it will, even at six pounds, even if you keep it light, right, it will start to hurt a little bit. It's the nature of sling bags, one shoulder bags. You can get a little relief by holding it like this, pulling it down like this, and walking around. Now, this is not ideal. Right? This is not ideal because you can't really sling it around. You can a little bit when it's like this. So you're only doing this to relieve yourself when you've got that full, that thing, um, when this left shoulder is getting a little bit tired, all right? Um, I also feel a little less secure with this. Somebody could definitely grab this and run off, right? This crossbody is really good for security purposes. So I think that, that about does it for the uh, in-case DSLR sling pack. I know this is a long review, but I told you, I'm getting into these things and I'm telling you all the things that I love and that I hate about these bags and this equipment. Um, this is my first review in the new style of this channel, so I hope you're interested in this. I hope this uh, was helpful for you. And um, if you liked it, please subscribe, hit like, and leave comments. I really like comments down below. Catch you on the flip side.